used to deal with third line. It's, it's fairly confusing because there's arrows going this way. But if I can get you to understand it, it starts looking pretty brilliant. It's, it's a pretty amazing system. But I think in order for you to follow it, you need to see it twice. And one time you need to be just focused on watching. And the second time you need to write these down. So I'm going to recommend the first time I draw it, you just watch. And then when we come down Friday, we'll draw it really, really slow. And hopefully at that point, it's going to click. So there's always some people that want to draw it. And you can draw it. I'm telling you not to. But I think it's probably best if you just watch. Let your brain kind of map out the different things. And then we'll draw it again on Friday. So this is the third line of defense. And it's called specific immunity. And the, and the difference about this system is it's going to be specific to a particular type of bacteria. So everything I draw on the board, it's going to be three main parts, are all looking for this one type of bacteria. If they find a cell that's infected with another type of bacteria, they're not going to do anything. If your body is looking for this bacteria, technically it can be in two places. It could have made it inside of a cell already. And in that case, you just want to kill that cell. It's much better to kill that cell, make another one, than let it be an incubator for this bacteria. And this system is called cell-mediated. That bacteria could still be loose be outside of the cells. You still want to kill it. This is called humoral, as in humor, the old Greek word for humor is the fluids of the body, so it's still in the fluids of the body. Or it's also called antibody mediated. Because that's how it's going to kill. Over here in cell mediated, there's two types of cells, TC, and this T stands for cytotoxic. And sometimes in science, two different groups will find the same cell around the same time, and they'll name it two different things, and since they both found it at the same time, both names stick. And so in some textbooks, or some sources, you'll see the TC cell called the CD8 cell. There's another cell, it's called the T helper cell. So the H stands for helper. And this guy is called the CD4, CD4 cell. There's others, I don't want to necessarily talk about all those though. There's what's called a suppressor. And it's his job to basically keep everyone calm down when there's not a direct threat. And the reason you want to do that is because you don't want these guys getting so ready to attack things that they start attacking one cell. So the TS is responsible for keeping this con keeping the lid on this unless there's an infection so that it doesn't start attack attacking one cell. What the TC cell is going to do is look for other cells that are infected. And what it's specifically looking for is something called MHC1. And MHC1 stands for Major Histo Compatibility Complex. It was discovered when they were trying to figure out whose blood could mix with who, so are you compatible histologically? And so that's where the term comes from. And what it is on this cell is this cell is going to find a couple of these bacteria and kill it on the inside. So it's going to get some of these bacteria. It's going to grab it with its MHC1. And it's going to put it out on the cell surface like, hey, this is what's infected me. I sure hope a TC cell comes around that's looking for this type of bacteria because then he's going to knock me off. So MHC is a protein that will grab a little bit of this bacteria put it out on the cell surface and say, this is infecting me. So then the TC cell 
will come around and join up with that MHC1. And what it does, it's going to make memory cells. So these are additional TC cells that are like your recruiting or your army reserves. They're not going to fight the fight today, they're going to fight the fight next time this thing comes around. But this TC cell will also make more active cells. And so these additional TC cells will go around and look for infected cells. So it'll find more infected cells. It's going to link up just like those guys did. So it's going to have this MHC1 going to let those two communicate. And when he finds that cell, he's going to unleash on it. Not just one method of killing, but three methods of killing. He's going to kill by disrupting metabolism. This cell can't make ATP anymore. It's going to die and starve soon if you disrupt metabolism. It's going to stimulate Apoptosis. Apoptosis is programmed cell death. Every cell in your body has genes that, if they're expressed, will it's basically like hitting a self-destruct button. That cell will kill itself. It's mainly thought of in the brain because when you make your neurons in your brain, you make too many. You make some that are saying, hey, I should take shorts when it's raining outside or something like that. You know, this neuron that's making a connection that's not accurate. You want to get rid of those neurons. You want to get rid of your extra neurons rather than the neuron that says take an umbrella when it's raining outside. So apoptosis is mainly thought of in the brain, but it works, it works here too because the TC cell can tell this cell, hey, activate your apoptosis genes. And it's going to self-destruct. And the third thing it's going to do is release perforin. And perforin was like we talked about with natural killer cells, will perforate the cell. So the TC cells are fairly cytotoxic. So then you're like, well, why do I have this TH cell? And he's going to go looking for infected cells too. And he has MHC as well. But this one's called MHC2. And you're like, what's the difference then? Why do you need two? The difference is just, in my opinion, brilliance. Because this MHC is in all cells with a nucleus. You have to have a nucleus in order to make a protein. So like red blood cells are off this because they don't have a nucleus. But every other cell can make this MHC1. So it means every other cell, when infected, can call in the TC cell. MHC2 is only in something called an antigen presenting cell. And these tend to ha hang out in lymph nodes. <coughs> and maybe before I say exactly why you have that, I'll say once this TH cell finds its infected target, it's going to make active, sorry, make memory, it's also going to make active cells. And what these active cells are going to do is kick these guys in the pants. It's going to stimulate these. It's going to release something called an interleukin. Interleukin, a leukocyte is a, is a white blood cell, so interleukin is a signal between white blood cells. It's going to tell these TC cells, pick it up a notch. So why would you have this set up? So Henniger's back in his canoe, and this cell, all of these cells, can call in TC cells. So all of them have a nucleus, and all of them can call in the TC cells. 
This guy, though, is sitting up here in the arm in the armpit because that's where your lymph nodes are. Your lymph nodes are basically in your armpit, your groin, your inguinal area, and your neck. So if I got an infection right here, I need to fight it. And so the T C cells will fight it. If that infection is spread up to here, I need to be able to get a signal somehow that says, this is big, you need to pick it up a notch. And so if the TH cell finds the same bacteria, it means I got a big infection. So isn't it nice that they can tell these guys, hey, this is a little bit more than a little cuts. Let's take this up a notch. I don't know if this is necessarily appropriate, but this is how my brain always goes to it. Does anyone remember the smiley face bomber? You know that one, Stokin? That sounds kind of familiar, but I... I so he's putting MacGyver bombs in mailboxes out in Western Iowa. And of course, the first couple of mailboxes go off, and it didn't really even hit the paper, but people were like, hmm. And then all of a sudden, it showed up like 100 miles further west, and people were like, well, this is something. This is not just some country kid or some kid having a little fun with MacGyver bombs. This is somebody making a statement. And so in my mind, first mailbox gets bombed. You're like, oh, this is something. And then all of a sudden, it shows up way far away, 100 miles further. So now it's like, this is something more. And then it showed up across the border in Nebraska. And at that point, it was like the National Guard was called in because it was like local, bigger than local, interstate. And so now it's like, it was an alarm. It turns out what the guy was doing, he was insane. He's an insane so right now somewhere in Minnesota. Um, he was trying so that when they mapped out the locations of the bombs, it would draw some other face on the map. But my point is, is just like when things spread further apart, the alarm level went up considerably. Your immune system uses the same thing. Local, a little bit more local, and there's a third cell over here that if it finds it too, then your immune system just goes into full attack mode. The B lymphocytes is part of this system. It's got these antibodies on the outside that will find that bacteria on its own. And when it finds that bacteria, it's called sensitized. But here again, the TH cell gets to participate because the TH cell can also come over here. And join up with the B cell. So this B cell has found a couple of bacteria, it's trapped them so they can't spread, but it hasn't done much. When the TH joins up with the B cell, this is an activated cell. And now this guy is going to make memory. And he's also going to make active cells. And these active cells are going to be churning out antibodies at amazing amounts, trillions per second, billions, at least billions per second, billions and billions of antibodies. And those antibodies are going to trap even more bacteria, they're going to surround that bacteria. And so you basically have three different things attacking at that point because you've got a widespread infection. The other thing to note is these memory, it takes a while to make those. So the first time you get the chicken pox, the chicken pox gets a head start. You're well infected before you've got all this made, and so you're going to get the chicken pox. The second time you see it, you've got all these memory cells. They're going to get going in two to three days. And in that case, you're immune system. 